after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them high on a mountain by themselves. Do you think Peter, James, and John expected to see what they saw on that mountain that day? When Jesus led them up on a mountain, do you think he said to them, come on with me, keep your eyes open, you're going to just love this. I thought Jesus even knew what was going to happen that day. Jesus went up to, to pray. God said, come up on the mountain with me and bring those three boys with you, the two sons of thunder and your rock star Peter. I doubt anyone had any idea what they were going to witness that day on the mountain. Even God called Moses up on the mountain. He, he told Moses what was happening. The Lord said to Moses, come up with me on the mountain and stay here. And I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments I have written. Now Moses didn't know all that he would witness on the mountain. But at least he had an idea where he was going and what was going on. A well-known, well-traveled, well-trusted man was riding on the train many years ago, back when the train was the way to go. And the conductor knocked on his door saying, tickets please. The man looked frantically for his tickets after much searching, the man said, I can't find my ticket anywhere. The conductor who had traveled with this man many times over the years said, that's okay, that's okay. When you get where you're going, you can wire us the money, no problem. The passenger replied, well, there is still one problem. You see, without my ticket, I don't know where I'm going. Peter, James, and John had no idea where they were going. They had no clue as to what was going to happen once they got there. They had no idea that they were going to be witnesses of, God's, of Jesus' majesty. They had no idea that they were going to see Moses, the receiver of the law, and Elijah, the receiver of prophecy, both join with Jesus in a spectacular display of blinding heavenly light. They had no idea that they would be enveloped by the cloud of divine presence. They had no idea that they were going to hear God's voice saying, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. How often do we get an epiphany directly from God? No wonder Peter was dazzled, dazed, and dumbfounded. And offered to set up three booths as shrines for Jesus and the other two figures. Perhaps Peter thought the kingdom that Jesus had been talking about just a few days ago could be established right here and right now on this mountain. The kingdom based on Moses, Elijah, and, and Jesus, the Mount Rushmore of the Judeo-Christian tradition. But the divine voice corrected Peter. The voice from heaven singled out Jesus as the sole authority, the sole source of authority. This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. If you've ever been to an auction, you know there's no telling how much something's going to sell for. Something you think might, might be valuable might go for a song. Or other stuff you think worthless might bring many times its estimated value. Back in 2012, a, 
a black chalk sketch of a face with the simple title, Head of an Apostle, circa 15, 19, 15, 20, was auctioned off. Its estimated value, pretty big price here, was between 16 and 24 million dollars. That's what they thought it was gonna go for. But because it was drawn by the Italian painter Raphael, it went for a staggering price of $47.8 million. That sketch was made as a study for the magnificent painting entitled The Transfiguration, which hangs in the Vatican Museum. Raphael's masterpiece actually tells two stories. We see in the upper portion of the painting the transfigured Jesus flanked by Moses and Elijah. Unlike older paintings, no one was wearing a halo in this one, but there was no need. All three of the main characters were backlit by heavenly light. All three were floating several feet off the earth. Jesus was in the center, floating above the law and the prophets. The apostles stunned are lying on the ground, barely able to rise, raise their eyes up. Then, then below, the second portion of the painting, the, the lower portion of the painting, we see the same apostles, Peter, James, and John, now speaking excitedly to a crowd of men, women, and children about the transfiguration. The same disciples who were shocked Staggered and stunned on the mountain of transfiguration are now awake, aware, and attending to the gospel message. Raphael, in his portrayal of this event, is making a very important pro a proclamation. It's not enough that something extraordinary happens. We as witnesses need to tell people about it because... That's what witnesses do. In Second Peter, we hear Peter tell us, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on that sacred mountain. God the Father came to him from the majestic glory saying, this is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Peter, Peter had an interesting track record as a witness. In Matthew's 16th chapter, just prior to this event in Matthew's gospel, Peter and the other disciples were asked by Jesus, who do people say the Son of Man is? To which Peter proclaimed, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus affirms his declaration, saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. That was in verse 17 and 18 of Matthew's 16th chapter. Then Peter talk, then Jesus talks about his, his death and resurrection, and Peter takes Jesus aside, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. To which Jesus replies, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. From rock to stumbling block in five verses, it's got to be a, a record. In the very next chapter, Peter gets to go up on the mountain of transfiguration for confirmation of his original proclamation about Jesus, that Jesus was the son of the living God. He hears God confirming Jesus' parentage. And further, he hears that God is pleased with what Jesus has been doing in his ministry and that Peter and the Twelve should listen to him. That should help Peter's witness, shouldn't it? But 
the story of Peter is not yet complete because Peter, Peter has a little trouble after Jesus is arrested when he was asked three times if he was a follower of this Jesus. And three times he denies knowing Jesus, his Lord. Peter did end up being the rock of the early church. If we pursue the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we find Peter empowered by the Spirit, speaking and acting out the gospel quite boldly, being a mighty witness for his Lord Jesus Christ. A lot like we see at the bottom of Raphael's masterpiece, The, the Transfiguration. There are many messages, messages to be gleaned from today's scriptures. But one of the more comforting messages is that of Peter, the eyewitness. We can conclude that if Peter, with all his ups and downs, can be a mighty witness for Jesus, then we too relying upon that same grace that Peter relied upon, that we too, with our, our faults and flaws and foibles, that we too can be a witness to God's majesty in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.